Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another class. In the previous video, we discussed bacterial cell wall, internal structure and gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Today we are going to get into a new topic which tells us about a unique structure present in some bacteria. It is plasmid. What are plasmids? What could be their use? What's the structure of this stuff? What are the different types of plasmids? Let's talk about these concepts. Plasmids are extra chromosomal elements found inside the cytoplasm of certain bacteria. Extra chromosomal means they are not found in association with, with the main chromosome. They are present in the cytoplasm separately. They are tiny ring-like structure. You see, they are ring-like structure, but the main chromosome is highly coiled structure. And the plasmids have the ability to replicate independently. Here, one question may arise, what could be the use of these structures? We know that bacteria has a centrally located double-stranded circular highly coiled chromosome. It forms the principal genetic material. You can see in this picture. It's big enough to carry all the essential genes or genetic informations which control the normal life of bacteria under normal environmental condition. So all the informations which are required for the normal life of bacteria in a normal environment are present in the centrally located principal genetic or sorry genetic material or uh, that chromosome that is the nucleoid. That is, genes are, you know what are genes. Genes are nothing but segments of chromosomes. Each segment or gene carry information for the synthesis of specific protein. So, the genes are actually for the synthesis of proteins. Okay. That is, we can say the recipe to each or the recipe to synthesize a specific protein is written in the specific gene. So, we can say each gene is a recipe okay and in that the, all the information necessary for the synthesis of a particular protein is written in this way different genes are assigned for different proteins proteins are the part and parcel of our inter internal system because majority of our hormones and enzymes are made up of proteins without the help of hormones and enzymes the body cannot run the internal machinery then actually what I am going to say is the centrally located chromosome carry all the information needed for the successful life of bacteria under normal environmental condition. Then why this extra chromosome here? You should keep in mind that they are not essential for the survival of all bacteria. Got it? They are not necessary for the survival of bacteria. For the normal survival of uh, uh, bacteria, that centrally located chromosome is enough. But the plasmids are not present in all strains of bacteria. They are found in those bacteria which live or face certain adverse conditions or harsh environment. Then how do they help these bacteria to survive? You know, plasmids contain certain specific genes. Only a few genes. These genes govern the synthesis of certain specific proteins. These proteins act as special protective measures to overcome the adverse condition. We can say that plasmids with certain specific genes improve the comfort level of bacterial life. Here we can take the rule of survival of the fittest into consideration. That is only the fittest form can overcome the adverse conditions. Just consider a situation of hot spring. Here normal bacteria cannot withstand because they do not have any special measures to encounter this situation. Okay, but the bacteria with plasmids designed to produce special proteins to give special protection against this condition can survive. Bacteria can be divided into two based on the presence or absence of plasmids. They are with plasmids and without plasmids. 
with plasmids are known as positive strains and without plasmids negative strains the positive strains can also be called as donors because they have plasmids negative strains are called recipients why they need to take from other bacteria that means from donors got it and the positive strains strains are considered as male and negative strains are considered as female then what about its number and size a bacteria can have no plasmid or have many like 20 to 30 or multiple copies of a plasmid keep in mind that they are closed circular double stranded molecules but there is a special case that is uh, in the case of borrelia burgdorferi it's a bacterium their plasmid is linear in nature got it their size the plasmid size can vary from 1 kilo base pair to 400 kilo base pairs we know that the building blocks of a dna is nucleotide building blocks of a dna they are nucleotides the nucleotide actually the dna is a double helical structure okay it's a ladder like structure here the steps are made up of base pairs so to calculate the length of a dna it's better to calculate or it is better to count the number of base pairs then what about the multiplication of course they can multiply but they multiply independent of the main chromosome and are inherited by the daughter cells that means daughter cell i told you daughter cell means uh, the um, donor uh, which gives um, uh, means their plasmid to the recipient recipients are considered as female so the transportation or inheritance by daughter cells you see there are five main types of plasmids they are f plasmids r fl plasmids call plasmids degenerative plasmid virulence plasmids okay here we are going to study about the first three forms is f r and call plasmids you see the plasmids can also be called as factors so here we can call f plasmid as f factor f factor is also known as fertility factor this fertility factor is nothing but a plasmid that calls for sex pili and their own transfer to other cells you see sex pili are finger like projections they are a bit long longer than bit longer than fimbriae they are locomotor structures but they uh, do not take part in locomotion they mainly take part in uh, reproduction got it these pili sex pili is synthesized under the control of f factor that is informations required for the synthesis of sex pili is written in f plasmids that means the recipe for the production of this particular sex pili is present or written in f plasmids we can call the bacterium with f factor as f plus strain or male form or donor and without f factor as f minus strain or positive uh, what is a female or a recipient these plasmid these plasmids must be transported from donor to recipient because genetic information should be inherited from one bacteria to another. This is the key process to propagate bacterial population, to maintain bacterial population. You see, the me mechanism of transfer of genes from F plus to F minus is known as conjugation. What's it? Conjugation. The first step in conjugation is contact between donor and recipient first of all they will come in contact okay that contact is by means of sex pili the f pillars of the donor recognizes and binds to the specific receptor on the wall of the recipient cell that means the recipient cell wall the bacteria that recipient bacteria its cell wall 
has a particular receptor cell that receptor uh, not receptor cell receptor protein and that receptor can be recognized by this particular f plus protein now they got connected now the plasmid is ready for transfer now the plasmid that is present in the cytoplasm now that is ready to enter into the f minus form here one bridge is already formed by the sex pili or f pillars here what happens you know a particular enzyme called endonuclease cleaves one of the two strands at a specific site called origin of transfer origin of transfer it's a double helical structure and it has a particular region that is known as origin of transfer and that particular area should be broken for that a particular enzyme called endonuclease which cleaves at this particular position then out of these two strands one strand slowly separates from the other and move towards okay they slowly separates from the other and moves towards a bridge formed between f plus and f minus it enters the f mi minus through the bridge now the f minus is converted to what f plus as soon as it enters the f mi minus cytoplasm it starts synthesizing its complementary strand complementary means its opposite strand okay the micromolecules required for its synthesis come from the cytoplasm at the same time in the donor bacteria the complementary strand will be synthesized in the same way and this micromolecules uh, which are required for the synthesis uh, will be taken from the cytoplasm of the donor bacteria after this process both the cells look same and the f1 strain also became f plus so what would be its function fertilization or we cannot call um, say it like that it allows the donor to produce a pillus for conjugation that's one important function this plasmid allows the donor to produce pillus for conjugation if we see a bacterium with sex pili from outside we can conclude that it's a it's f plus that means positive strain this is an important point as far as your entrance is concerned when if plasmid is attached with main dna it is designated as episome that's another new term episome what is episome if the f plasmid is found attached with the main dna then we can call that combination as episome and this type of cell bacteria is known as high frequency recombinant cell hfr cell high frequency recombinant cell or hfr cell the word episome was given by jacob and wallman let's move on to the next plasmid that is r factor or r r plasmid it was first demonstrated in shigella in 1950 shigella is a gram negative bacteria which causes uh, dysentery shigella dysentriae uh, that bacteria uh, causes dysentery and this r factor is a plasmid that calls for resistance to many antibiotics thereby this bacteria can overcome the effect of antibiotics r factor can offer resistance to antibiotics like penicillin ampicillin etc a bacterium with r plasmid for penicillin resistance is able to survive treatment by that antibiotics that means the r factor if uh, that r factor is assigned for uh, penicillin resistance and uh, if that particular bat bacteria is exposed to penicillin medicine penicillin antibiotic penicillin what happens this r factor which is designed for the production of uh, a protein against against this penicillin what happens this particular plasmid inactivates penicillin got it so it uh, it can work against the treatment of antibiotic uh, penicillin 
So let's see how our factor provides uh, resistance against antibiotics or the mechanism behind antibiotic resistance. It acts in two ways. Drug in, first one is drug inactivation. Second one is drug modification. In the case of drug inactivation, in, in another way that is drug modification here, the drug is converted to or modified into a new form or a structure so that it may not be able to work against the bacteria. An example is given here that is beta lactomerase is a protein which is produced under the control of R factor that means produced by R factor that inactivates penicillin. Another class of plasmid, its name is cholecinogenic or coal factor. Cholecinogenic factor or coal factor that determines the production of proteins called cholecin, which have antibiotic activity and can kill other bacteria. This protein can kill closely related bacteria that lack coal plasmid of same type. Anyway, it helps to reduce the competition among bacteria. That means in a culture or in a, uh, if, uh, just imagine in a, in a medium, a different type, different strains of bacteria are living together. In such condition, uh, there will be competition for food and uh, habitat. In such condition, these bacteria or the bacteria having this uh, coal factor, they can survive. They can uh, kill other bacteria with the uh, protein that is produced uh, under the control of this coal factor. Let's look into some related points. Plasmids are also known as sex factors, conjugants, extra chromosomal replicons and transfer factors. Fungi that is yeast also have plasmids. Plasmids are extremely valuable tools in the field of molecular biology and genetics. Plasmids created in the lab are known as vectors or constructs. Vectors are plasmids genetically engineered by the scientists and used for research and production of biological products. They play a critical role in such uh, procedures as gene cloning, recombinant protein production, uh, like the production of human insulin and gene therapy research. Okay, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Have a nice day.